aside for a couple of minutes because we got an Eagle Insider ready to join us. He's been good enough to hop on with me basically every week during the season. Uh, you should be reading him day in and day out on phillyvoice.com and or si.com if that's where you get your football news. His Extending the Play podcast on the birds is must-listen stuff for Eagle fans, too. John McMullen joins me here on 94 WIP. How are you, J.M.? Doing well. How are you, Jerry? Good. Um, I had uh, Brandon Lee Gowton on last night, and he said something that um, he felt pretty strongly about. I didn't feel near as strong, and I wasn't paying as strict attention as he was, so he probably knows better than me, but I want to get your take on it. He thought that the post-game press conference with Doug Peterson after the game stuck out like a sore thumb that the Eagles won, yet Doug, he did not see or hear any joy, that it was kind of matter of fact after the Eagles had lost several games in a row and they found a way to win. Now, when he got into describing some specific things, he got a little bit more in-depth and showed a little bit more emotion. But his overall take on Doug Peterson, that it was kind of workmanlike, that the team had done what they had done on Sunday. Did you get that feeling? Yeah, I did. It was a little weird, actually. Uh, and, and it was weird from the perspective that, uh, you know, everyone looked at Jalen Hurts and his performance, rookie quarterback, first NFL start against number one ranked defense, moves a, 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 the football team pretty efficiently. wasn't great, but, uh, again, under the circumstance and, and compared to how they were playing, it was great uh, and kind of seemed to downplay it. And, uh, you know, he admitted a little bit later that he was concerned uh, about Carson Wentz's feelings a little bit. It can't be at this point. Um, and uh, I think after watching the film, uh, when he did his post-day press conference, uh it was a little bit better, but yeah, it, it was strange is how I described it. And it was almost like, okay, you know, let's give credit to everybody, not just Jalen Hurts. And I don't know, 22 year old kid. I, I, I would have, I would have gave him a heck of a lot more credit than Doug did after the game, but you're right. You know, it's he, been a difficult season. And he did more so uh, the day after you're right. And, but then he did go, and we as a team, that this team rallied together, and this team showed toughness. So he did make it about the entire team, which he could have done on Sunday after the game and chose not to. He went a little um, undersold. You mentioned the fact that you think it was because of Carson. Well, we got another game again this Sunday. Is it going to be the same thing again? Is Doug Peterson going to walk on eggshells after the game, any time he talks to the media because – he doesn't want to upset Carson's psyche. At what point do we just say, well, we've made a change at quarterback, and it may be for the future, and the only thing that matters is what's going on with this team right now, and Carson Wentz is like anybody else who's sitting on a bench. He's a backup. Yeah, that's the way it should be. Uh, I mean, coaches always talk about meritocracies and, and, you know, those who deserve to be on the field, uh, the best 11 should be on the field. Uh, you know, at some point, that's got to be more than lip service, uh, despite the contract, despite the pedigree, uh, despite all of that. And, and, and Carson benched himself uh, in, that, in, in, in that Green Bay game. Uh, I don't think there's any question about it. Uh, and, and Jalen is, is going to be the starter. You know, maybe that was the biggest part of all. He wouldn't even name Jalen Hurts the starter uh, until Monday. Uh, and he did it here on WIP. He didn't even uh, uh, on the morning after. He, he wouldn't commit to it. And then he finally committed to it at his afternoon press conference. Uh, and everybody knew he had to be the starter um, because of the way he played. So it, it was a little bit strange, but yeah, this team has got to uh, look. If Carson Wentz is, is that fragile, uh, and I don't think he is, by the way, uh, number one, and, and if it's going to affect his psyche that much, it's a lost cause anyway. So you just got to go forward and, and try to win football games because you're still in this thing, believe it or not. 
They are. John McMullen from SI Philly Voice and extending the pod, uh, studying and play podcast here with us on 94WIP. Uh, don't think you and I have ever discussed this before. I know I've discussed it too many times on the air. Uh, pro Football Focus. I've had guys on from Pro Football Focus, those who write and put together and crunch the numbers for Pro Football Focus. And I'll be 100% honest, even after talking to individuals who do the work for them, I still don't completely understand how they come out with the rankings that they do. And I should. I'm not a stupid guy. I might not be the smartest guy to ever come down the road, but I'm not a dope either. And I should be able to comprehend it. And I'm admitting in advance I don't. And today was just another prime example of how I don't get it. Jalen Hurts did not get a real good grade for the game that he had the other day. Uh, I had you grade him for me last week. I think you and I both went B minus. Um, I went B plus yesterday with his grade just after the Sunday game. And as per Pro Football Focus's grade, uh, it sounds like it would be nowhere near a B plus. How much credence do you give Pro Football Focus? Do you understand their rankings? And did you agree with their rankings that Jalen Hurts' game, at least in the passing game, was only the second worst game any Eagle quarterback has had this year? I can name seven off the top of my head that Carson had that I think were worse passing games than Jalen Hurts this past week. Where does Pro Football Focus come off? Well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna blow your mind because I gave Jalen Hurts an A, uh, and I think he deserved an A in that game. And I also understand what Pro Football Focus is talking about. Oh, uh, now I and, now now you are blowing my mind. The A yeah, didn't blow exactly. my mind. How yeah. you can give him an A and understand where Pro Football Focus is coming from? Yes, that officially blows my mind. Yeah, uh, because what 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 they do, and I, I have a lot of respect for what they do. I, I mean, they grade film essentially like a coach would grade film. In other words, if, if you look at, you know, Chauncey Gardner Johnson dropping essentially what would have been a pick six, well, that didn't affect the game in a negative fashion for the Eagles. It affected the game in a negative fashion um, for the Saints. Obviously, they couldn't finish the play. Um, but if you're a coach, if you're Press Taylor, for instance, and you're running back that play, you're not going to say, Jalen, okay, forget about it. They didn't make the play. That was a bad play by the quarterback. The fumble late in the game is a bad play by the quarterback. So, you know, pro football focus is grading every single play, and, and that's the part where I, I think people don't understand is that when you make big plays, that have an impact on the game, it's not going to spike your ranking just because it, it's a big play. It's just going to be graded as as you doing your job or, or whatever, and then you're on to the next play. So it, it's a more uh, – it, and, it, again, it, it, if you're going to use it as gospel and, and say, I, I, you know, I'll use the baseball analogy, you know, you have uh, – a power hitter who might go, you know, one for four and he strikes out three times, but he hits a grand slam and he has a big impact on the game. And you got a, a light hit and shortstop going two for four, making great plays in the field. And he didn't have as big as an impact on the game, but that guy's the better player. Uh, it, it, it's, if I explain that at all, let me know, but that's kind of the difference of, of what, they do, and what people see when you see big plays. Okay. Jalen Hurts made big plays. I, I understand what you're saying. Um, so my question to you then has to be, do you agree with it? You said you understand it. And the way you laid it out, I understand it better. Thank you for that. But is a, a, an almost pick in the first quarter the same as hitting a wide receiver in stride down five with 45 seconds to go in a game yeah, to lift the not. team to a victory. It, it sounds to me like they grade those two plays exactly the same. And they do, yeah. That, they do. That's faulty logic and thinking as far as I'm concerned because the game isn't played in a vacuum. It's played in 60 minutes, and there are more important minutes than other minutes. Well, that yeah, and they can defend themselves if they want, but that's, that's sort of to the person – 
looking at the information, how are you going to do it? If you're somebody who subscribes to Pro Football Focus and says, okay, this guy's the best player because he's got the, the PFF ranking, you know, you probably shouldn't think about it that way. Miles Sanders is another perfect example. He's got a terrible Pro Football Focus ranking. Uh, because we've talked about his struggles in, in, in the passing game as a receiver, uh, in pass protection. Uh, but bang, 82 yard run. He's got that kind of explosion. Uh, and that's not going to wait too much. And he's not going to be up in the rarefied air, the, the better or the more well rounded running backs on a particular game day, though, he might have a bigger impact on a game. So. If you understand that and you know what it is, I think it's valuable. If you don't understand it and 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 you take it as 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 valuable and gospel, you're probably going down the wrong road. Yeah, I, I think it has a value. I don't know if I would say it's valuable. We're talking to our buddy John McMullen from Philly Voice and SI uh, dot com. Uh, it's going to be hurts this week. When do you think we're going to know who's going to be the quarterback in the final two weeks of the season? And I assume it's going to be a week at a time, so it'll be Dallas first and then the Washington football team thereafter. Is this going to be a Monday-Tuesday wait again? Can Hurts be good enough in the game on Sunday where Doug actually goes into the Zoom room after the game and says, yeah, if you're going to ask me, yeah, Jalen's going to start again next week. It, can the time frame change depending on how the play goes? Well, I mean, that's up to Doug. But I, I, the bottom line is Jalen Hurts is going to be started the rest of the season, uh, whether he announces that at some point uh, or whether he announces it quickly for each game. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Barring injury, he's going to be out there. Uh, th- this organization kind of knows – Carson needs a reset, so to speak, control all to lead. Can't do that to the off season. Got to rebuild the mechanics. You can't do that in, in practice uh, during the season. So um, if Jalen's injured, he'll have an opportunity to go in there. But if he's healthy, he's going to finish this season, win or lose in Arizona. Uh, and, and, and from that standpoint, the season would be essentially over if they lost. Uh, so he's going to finish it anyway. And if he wins, they're not going to sit a quarterback who's won two straight. They're going to let him uh, try to run the table and try to win this division. Um, so, I, I, I mean, th- whether Doug uh, announces it or when he announces it to me is not really all that relevant. Everybody knows Jalen is, is going to be the starter for the rest of the season. How important is winning this division? Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's important. Um, I, I, I thought it was more important, believe it or not, if Carson was the quarterback, because I think it would have been valuable to get playoff experience. Remember, he doesn't have any. Uh, he only played a handful of plays in January against Seattle before he got the concussion. So I thought it would have been valuable for him uh, ultimately, if, if you're going to go back to Carson Wentz in the off season, and I think that's the plan as we sit here today, uh, I don't know how valuable it is other than winning a bad division, other than uh, being competitive and, and, and trying to win football games, and that's what the Eagles are, are attempting to do. Uh, and I think it will be helpful for Jalen Hurts. And, again, if – Carson goes off the rails and he's your starting quarterback, then all of a sudden uh, there probably is a little bit more value. Uh, but one and done, not not a lot, uh, other than, you know, if you want to put up the NFC East better, <laughs> I guess is the worst division uh, in the history of mankind. I guess, I guess that's something to be proud of. John, I started leaning on you uh, to be a regular uh, guest for me when before the season started, when you started up for Philly Voice. Uh, and I don't know if that was before or after the NFL's draft, which was virtual this year, um, different than it had ever been done before. But a lot of people weighed in when the Eagles used their second-round selection on Jalen Hurts. Most of them not positively that Howie Roseman was a – 
complete buffoon as a, a drafter and that uh, it's a vanity pick and how do you do something like that? How don't you get Carson Wentz another uh, uh, weapon, uh, fireable offense in some people's minds? I, for one, was not as critical as others because I like Jalen Hurts as much as I did. I actually thought that they made a decent pick because they were protecting themselves with a safety net if Carson got hurt again because he had become a guy who'd gotten hurt every single year. And if you've got someone to go to better than Nate Sudfeld, that could help you in the upcoming season. Now, I don't think any of us saw it playing out the way that it did, but here we sit, and Jalen Hurts is probably going to be playing these last three games and could be the quarterback of the Eagles going forward. I don't have to apologize to Howie Roseman, but I talked to a whole bunch of people that I think should be considering apologizing to Howie Roseman for over-critiquing the selection of Jalen Hurts. How did you read the Jalen Hurts draft? Yeah, I, I didn't think it was a fireable offense. I thought it was a bad pick. I still think it was a bad pick. Uh, it, you, there's a, you know, there's a certain way of business and doing in the NFL. You don't pay a quarterback $128 million and then uh, less than 12 months later at the time, uh, take another quarterback at number 53 overall when you have so many holes on the roster. I thought the third round pick was a bad pick. Davion Taylor for that same reason as well, because he was more of a, a raw prospect, not ready to play. And that's also played out. I, I thought I, it, it was just more than bad. And it wasn't about the player at all, because I like Jalen Hurts as a player as well. Uh, it was about uh, the needs and, and about what you have and about how you, how you build a football team. And I, I always bring up this story as, there's a CFL quarterback by the name of, of Bo Levi Mitchell. He's a star, was a star in the CFL. Uh, and the Vikings wanted to bring him in as a, as a, as a backup quarterback to Kirk Cousins. Uh, and, and, and Bo told this story that, uh, he went in there with like a, a normal job interview. And, and what do you do in a job interview, Joe? You try to say, I, I'm going to come in and compete. I'm going to try to take Kirk's job. He thought that's what they wanted to hear. And Rick Spielman was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't want you to compete. We want you to, to go in the locker room. We want you to be a good guy. We want you to support Kirk in everything he does. We don't want any controversy whatsoever. And I wrote the night the Eagles picked Jalen Hurts. And, and by the way, I put it on Twitter. His agent told me the Eagles were picking him. I almost didn't put it on Twitter because I didn't believe it. That's how strange it was to me. But I did put it out there, and they did pick him. And, you know, the minute I, I made the pick, I wrote about it that night, any adversity whatsoever, this team is inviting a quarterback controversy. I, it wasn't hard. It wasn't, you know, it's not like I'm a genius. It's common sense. Howie Roseman should have understood that. Now, and, and, and by the way, Jody, not in a million years, did Howie Roseman think Carson Wentz was going to uh, fall off a table like right. he did this season? Not in a million years. So the only way that this pick could have been a good one for the Philadelphia Eagles was for Carson Wentz to fail. And that, by definition, is a bad pick. Or Carson Wentz breaks his leg week one. And well, Jalen Hurts goes part, in and part. plays well enough to get the Eagles into the playoffs. The injury part uh, is legitimate. But remember, the concussion I, I kind of put aside. I, I mean, that was uh, arguably borderline late hit. People have concussions in these games. You see it every week in the NFL with the protocol. Sometimes it's out of their hands. They're not even allowed. They take your helmet. You're not even allowed back in the game. So he was coming off the season where he played 16 games. And, yes, Bottom line is you can't legislate injuries in, in this league. And, oh, by the way, Carson had played every game this year until he was benched for performance reasons, nothing to do with injuries. And he got sacked historic levels of time. So I, I think that injury uh, label should be put behind him at least uh, a little bit. And, and then, as I mentioned, the second part of that is you can't legislate injuries anyway. So you can't build your team 
based on injuries, and Howie would be the first one to say that. But he the really one, would. The one thing I'd like to know, which I don't know if we'll ever know, and this is pure speculation on my part, and I'm doing so anyway. How much did the concussion last year affect his play this year? I don't think we're ever going to know. We can only take what Carson says, which is yeah. he's having no negative effects from it. But something needs to explain the massive going backwards of Carson Wentz's skill set and abilities this year. And I don't have the answer, so I can only speculate on it. And I think his concussion may have something to do with it. Who knows? And it well, may... I, I can tell you the first question I asked Carson this offseason it was about the concussion and he said that it was, and he said it was scary. And, uh, but he said it was fine. Now I can only take him at his word. He's been asked about that. He was asked about that by uh, Tim McManus a couple of weeks ago, he said the same thing. Um, the Eagles again, have invested $128 million. If they thought it was an issue whatsoever, believe me, they'd have them go to every independent neurologist in the world. They don't think it's an issue. I I don't think when this is all said and done, I, I don't think people are going to point to that and say that's the reason. I, I think it's got to do with a, a breakdown of mechanics and confidence. I think it's that simple. Okay, we shall see. JM, always a pleasure, my friend. Thanks much. I will tap into you again next week. Appreciate you hopping on with me tonight. All right, thanks, Jody. Read him on phillyvoice.com, sportsillustrated.com, and check out his podcast, Extending the Play, for you Birds fans out there. Jody Mack hanging with you here on 94 WIP. Let's get the phones restoked. Went nice and long with JM. Got to him a little late, but went late as well. Get those phones open now, 215-592-9494. Plenty more Eagles to talk here on 94 WIP. Don't have time to call? Shoot us a text. The 94 WIP text line. Powered by Red QL. Hey, Jody Cameron here. Pro football is in its 